The season's trekking on, which means the picks are trekking on. Obviously, because. Cue the intro. What is up, football fans? Week 10 of the NFL 2021 season coming at you with the picks. Real quick before we jump into the picks, tell you where we're at when it comes to records and all that good stuff. Have to shout out today's sponsor and what the picks are now presented by, and that is mybookie.ag. Be sure to go over, check them out. You can bet anywhere, anytime, anything. Use the promo code do wrong and it you receive double your first deposit. So again, go over, check out mybookie.ag, bet responsibly. Let's jump into this. Uh last week, I didn't do too swift. It was another situation where teams that should have won lost and teams that should have lost won. And I went eight and six. My dad went seven and seven. Looking at the Pick'em League, I'll tell you who the top five is now. That sucker's switching up left and right. We have Fins Up Switzerland sitting there at uh, tied number one with Denzo 239 sitting at 93 and 43. Puppet Master at Works 92 44. And we have a tie for fourth place. ESPN long number. Uh, and Silver Mitch 2017 at 91 and 45. So we're going to jump into tonight's game. And that is the Miami Dolphins taking on the um, Baltimore Ravens. Normally, I wait on the Dolphins uh, pick so you guys can be in suspense and watch Friday's video. But we're playing tonight, Thursday night. So I already put out the preview video on Tuesday. You guys already know I'm picking Baltimore. Uh, Ravens are just better as a team. Uh, but I'd love a big shock here. My dad, again, don't be surprised. He picked the Dolph he picked the Dolphins. But looking at my bookie, and they have the Dolphins getting seven and a half. I don't think that's enough. I think the Dolphins will probably lose by ten or more. Uh, but again, if they can keep it competitive, if they can blitz, uh, get after them like they did Tyrod Taylor, I think they can make it competitive. But again, I can see them losing by at least ten. So the seven and a half from my bookie. Uh, just ain't going to work there. Then we have the first Sunday game, the Bills. <laughs> the Buffalo Bills take on the New York Jets. The Jets screwed me over. They were getting, get, getting 10 and a half, marching down the field with like a minute left. It's was about to score a touchdown to make it about a five-point lead. For the Colts, I would have won a ton of cash. And they throw an interception off a pick. And then you have the Bills. <laughs> you have the Bills. <laughs> I'm sorry, Buffalo. I'm sorry. You, this, don't take any offense to this. And don't take me being, you know, vindictive or, but you, you, you needed to be knocked down, down to earth a little bit, just a little bit. You lost to the Jaguars 9-6. to six. It was a baseball score. Who's Dolphins suck. Yeah, but at least we put up more than six points against the Jaguars. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say there. But that being said, I you know, I'm taking the Bills. My father's taking the Bills. I suppose Zach Wilson might be back for this game, which then means next week when the Dolphins are in MetLife, which I'll be there. He'll probably be there, but we are both taking the Bills. And when it comes to the spread on my bookie, uh, the Bills are giving 12 and a half. I might take the Jets in that one, but in all honesty, the Bills might be real pissed. They might be real pissed that they lost to the Jaguars and might try to just destroy the Jets. But the Jets tend to keep it close. And I bet I bet on them getting 10 and a half and they, they pulled it within. So maybe I'll bet them on 12 and a half. Uh, but yeah, straight up, I'm taking the Bills. Then we have the Washington football team home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who were both on a bye last week, so I can't even talk any schmack on either of the teams. Uh, but I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is just a better team. Tampa Bay is Super Bowl contender. Uh, I thought the Bills are Super Bowl contenders, but I'm sorry. I'll stop, Buffalo. You're probably really licking your wounds after that one. Um, I'm going to take Tampa. So is my father. They're just a better team than Washington right now. Um they're giving 10 to uh, – to Tampa's giving 10 to Washington. I'd still go with Tampa here. Uh, Washington's defense, I, I haven't watched them much. 
I know last year Washington's defense was kind of underrated, uh, but I, yeah, I'm still going to go Tampa even given 10. Yeah, I just don't like that one. Then we have the Atlanta Falcons, which was another one of the games that I picked that I lost because they beat the Saints last week, taking on the Denver uh, the the Cowboys. Who lost to the Denver Broncos? Two two teams that I picked for and against. I picked against the Falcons for the Cowboys. Screwed up my picks. Cowboys got completely owned by the Denver Broncos at home. If it was in Denver, that was a horse of a different color. Home. Teddy Bridgewater lit it up. And then the Falcons played a very good game against the, the Saints. Made it close. I think it was a 27-25 win. I'm going to go with the Cowboys here. I'm going to go with the Cowboys here. I think they bounce back. I think they're a little humiliated. And I'm going to take the Cowboys here. My father. No. So that my father's take going with the Falcons. I guess he lost faith in the Cowboys after last week's loss. Uh, the uh, Cowboys are giving nine. I might take. I might bet the Falcons on that one. Get nine. I think it'll be a close game. I might bet the Falcons on that one and the spread. But uh, yeah, I'm going Cowboys straight up. My dad's going with the Falcons. To find to be very very interesting. Then we have the Saints, who again lost, just lost to the Falcons, taking on those Titans. Beat the Rams. The <laughs> Stafford looked like the lion Stafford last week. Uh, just what were you doing, man? Just and your own end zone, just chucking the ball up in the air, hoping for something. Titans looking good. They don't have Derrick Henry, but you know they still were their their offense was a little bit better. You know you have to rely more on Tannehill. Um, they got Adrian Peterson. I am actually going with. Tennessee in this one. I like the Titans in this one. My father also likes the Titans in this one. And the Titans are giving three. So I'm still... I think it's going to be a touchdown uh, lead. Either way you go. So I'm still going to go with the Tennessee Titans in that one. Then we have them Jacksonville <laughs> Jaguars. Coming off a red hot win against the Buffalo Bills. Taking on the Colts who beat the Jets. They beat the Jets. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going with the Colts in this one. And my dad's going with the Colts in this one. We think that Jacksonville just got, maybe they got lucky. Maybe they just caught the uh, Bills off guard. But we're both going with the Colts in this one. And the Colts are giving 10 and a half to Jacksonville. I know Trevor Lawrence is dealing with an injury. I'm probably still going to go Indy, even with the 10 and a half. Because I went with the 10 and a half to the Jets. And that bit me in the butt. So I'm still going to go with the... Um, the Colts in that one. And again, if you guys want to know where the flip are you getting these spreads from, my bookie AG, that's what the picks this week are sponsored by and presented by. Then we have the Detroit Lions who have yet to win a game, sitting there in 0 and 8, taking on the Steelers. Steelers were down and out. Now they're sitting at 5 and 3. They're doing pretty well. Najee Harris breaks my heart, doing fantastic for him. I'm going with the Steelers. My father's going with the Steelers. And when it comes to the spread, I, I don't even. I'm pretty sure the spread is pretty ridiculous for the Steelers. They are giving only oh, eight and a half. I'm still going with the Steelers. I think the Steelers are gonna win more than more than eight and a half. So Steelers all around. Then we have the Cleveland Browns who just just completely owned those Cincinnati Bengals. That score was just ridiculous. Taking on the New England Patriots. I'm actually going with Cleveland in this one. My father is also going with Cleveland in this one. Uh, I just like the way their offense is. I think they're super dangerous in their defense. Um, I like the way they're playing. And the Patriots, you know, don't knock the Patriots. They're sitting at 5-4. and four. They're struggling a little bit in the beginning of the season, coming back, making some good plays, playing well, New England Patriots. Uh, but I'm going with Cleveland and that one. And when it comes to the spread on my bookie, the uh, Browns are getting one and a half. So it's it's – Straight up. So I'm still going with Cleveland, even against the spread. I tend to not like the bet. You could tell me if I'm wrong when it comes to betting certain spreads. But when they get about one and a half or anything around like three, I tend to not bet it. Maybe I'm dumb. I like to go for the bigger spreads. And if I think they can, you know, I feel like there's more of a payoff there. You can teach me more about that stuff. I'm new to that. Then you have the Minnesota Vikings who went to overtime with the, uh, the Ravens. Barely, barely lost that one. Taking on those Los Angeles Chargers who... Barely beat the Philadelphia Eagles. 
I am going with the Chargers. My father's also going with the Chargers. I like that the Chargers took the Ravens to overtime, and a few teams took the Ravens to the overtime. Makes me a little promising for tonight's game. Uh, but my dad, like I said, also taking the Chargers. Chargers are giving three. So, again, it's another situation where I think uh, – Chargers are going to win by more than that. Then we have the Carolina Panthers, who didn't do too well against those New England Patriots last uh, week. I will say Stephon Gilmore getting a pick on Mac Jones is a little poetic. Uh, take it on the Cardinals, sitting there at 8-1, and one, still, you know, that one loss to the Packers. It's going to be, I'm taking the Cardinals to, to win this one. My father's also taking the Cardinals to win this one, and they're getting 10 and a half. the Cardinals. Uh, I mean, the Cardinals are giving 10 and a half to the Panthers. I still, I... I have no confidence in um, their quarterback, Sam Darnold. For some reason, my brain shut off on what his name was. So I'm still going with the Cardinals, even with the spread um, in that one. Then we have the Philadelphia Eagles, like I said, barely lost to the Chargers, taking on the Denver Broncos, who put a whooping, a whooping on that Dallas Cowboys. I'm going with the Broncos. My dad's going with Philly. I guess he thinks that was all um, a dream. Reading Word Up magazine. How you doing? Uh, the spread there, the Broncos are only given two and a half. The fact that they're home, though. Playing in mile high is, is a different world. I'm still going with Denver in that one. Then we have a game where I have, I made a pick, but I might change my pick because I don't know how I feel about this one. And that is the Green Bay Packers hosting the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I think Russell Wilson's playing. All the hoopla he made on social media about his finger being fine and and his little short movie. I th- you have to play Russell Wilson. But is Aaron Rodgers playing? Because if Aaron Rodgers isn't playing, I'm going with Seattle. And if Aaron Rodgers is playing, I'm going with Green Bay. Because without Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay is a different team. A completely different team. We saw that last week when they only put up seven and lost 13 to seven to the Kansas City Chiefs. So it all depends on who is playing for Green Bay for me to pick that one. But as of right now, I don't think um, Aaron Rodgers is playing. So I'm going with Seattle. My dad is going with Green Bay. My dad, when he's torn, tends to like to take the home team. And Green Bay is only giving three to Seattle. So again, to me, it all depends on. I don't know what I'm doing with my pen there. Then we have the Kansas City Chiefs, like I said, just came off a a victory against Green Bay, taking on those Las Vegas Raiders who just have a team filled with people that just, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going Kansas City in this one. I think Kansas City is going to have a bounce back here. I think Kansas City is slowly going to turn, try to get back into first place in the West. Uh, my dad is going with Raiders, and on my bookie, the spread is only two and a half. So even in that aspect, I will be taking Kansas City if I was a betting man. And then the final game, the Monday night game, those Rams who lost to the Tennessee Titans, taking on the 49ers who are struggle bus city. Me and my father are both going with the Rams, and the 49ers are give, are getting four points from the Rams. I would still be going with the Rams in that one. But again, thank you so much to my bookie AG for uh, re- sponsoring and presenting this week's pick videos, go over, check them out, use the promo code Do Wrong, and get double your first deposit. But other than that, comment below, let me know what you guys think of the picks, all that good stuff, the positives and negatives, and I'm going to get to one of your guys' comments of the day. This comment comes from West Coast Dolphin, and he says, comment of the day, Doug, do you, would you, or should the Dolphins go trade for Wilson or get Carr or Rodgers in free agency? Or just trade for Carr just in case Tua doesn't plan out. The whole quarterback situation um, when it comes to the Miami Dolphins is is a a fickle one. Because I don't know what is going on with the Dolphins in the quarterback situation. Uh, I don't know how the coaches feel. I don't know about any of that stuff. Um, So when it comes to me personally, I would personally like to see Tua develop. With the stuff that Tua went through, I don't know if he wants to develop in Miami. And I don't think the coaching and the owners and the GM are going to let it happen. Now, as of me right now, sitting here looking at Tua Tungvalo, he's a little inconsistent. He needs some work in certain aspects of his game. He's not the finished product that everyone thought he was going to be coming out of college. 
whether it be the hip injury set him back, whether it be a change of offense set him back, whatever it is, he's not the finished product that people thought he was going to be coming out of college, and that's why so many people are upset. Uh, so me personally, I'd like to see him develop more. I'd like to, you know, actually give him more than a certain amount of games. But in the NFL, this this you know this time of year and this decade, you it's not for long. You need that instant gratification. And he's not giving it, and I don't think the head coach, I don't think the owner, and I don't think the GM are in a patient mode. I think they want to win now. So he probably isn't going to be on the team next year. Coming from who we're going to have to replace him, I don't know. I'll answer that when free agency starts and if he is traded. Uh, But me personally, i like to see him, see what he can do. Thank you so much for the comment, West Coast All Fan. If you guys want to be part of Comment of the Day, just in below comment of the day but i will see you guys later tonight this video is going to come out earlier in the day i will see you guys later tonight with the live stream of the dolphins taking on the baltimore ravens will go on my bookie ag and make a bet before the game starts so i can you know they're also sponsoring the live stream so i will see you guys later tonight but like usual guys stay classy have fins up